Hey YouTube, Common Collector here, and today I am very excited to be bringing you guys an update to my Morphtronic FTK deck profile. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already, and make sure to stay till the end of the video. We're going to be going over a few things. We're going to be going over the deck profile. I'm also going to just be going over sort of like um, a, a rudimentary combo guide and just sort of like a uh, showing off um, the different starters of the deck, as well as just sort of showing you guys uh, the full side deck and other cards that I eliminated uh, in sort of the um, uh, production of this deck. This deck, um, I've been working on this endlessly uh, every single night for the last uh, like week or so, and just changing things up, changing up the ratios. So I'm going to go be going over all of that stuff throughout the video. So uh, again, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. For those of you guys who don't know, uh, Morphtronic is one of my all-time favorite decks. Morphtronic FTK, not so much. I think you should probably be, uh, you know, meeting up with a specialist if F an FTK deck is your favorite. But Morphtronic in general is just my favorite. So uh, we're going to be going in depth into this one. So let's get on into the profile. So starting off for one of our non-Morphtronic cards, we are playing the one copy of Cannon Soldier. This is a very pure style build. There are a lot of other builds that play like the Danger Engine. Uh, I've seen Punks before. That was kind of like an older build of the deck. Um, and then you can also do stuff like with um, the Horus Engine and all that stuff. But we are going to be playing pure. We have three copies of Telephone uh, to go along with our FTK. For those of you guys who don't know uh, Morphtronic Telephone, every time that you're trying to use his effect, you roll a die to reborn a guy from your graveyard while he's in attack position uh and then the basically the gimmick with the deck is as long as you get a uh one telephon out along with cannon soldier and then you can use telephon's effect to bring back the other telephon in your graveyard so you just gotta have one on the field one in graveyard for rotation and you just keep cycling them and then blow up the one who already used his effect with cannon soldier and then rinse and repeat uh until your opponent's life points are down to zero so that is the basic theme of the deck for those of you guys who don't know anyways continuing on into the profile we have our three copies of Morphtronic Cellphon. This is the uh, heart and soul of the deck that started it all back in the day. Uh, one of my like uh, favorite first profiles that I ever did on the channel that got just tons of views, tons of following. Um, so the Morphtronic Cellphon, very important for the deck. Uh, similar to Telephone, but you roll a dice, and then depending on the die roll, you reveal that many cards off the top of your deck, and then that's the Morphtronic. Uh, you get, uh, get to reveal cards off the top of your deck, and then f if you find a Morphtronic monster, within there you get to special summon it um i like to call morphtronics uh gambling at emancipators because if you guys know how at emancipators work you reveal five cards and then special a rock from among them uh morphtronics are just gambling versions of at emancipators and then the other gambling card that we have we have our three copies of smartphone um so you got your smartphone cell phone and telephone smartphone helps to round out the deck by adding any morphtronic card to your hand which is very important to note because it's going to add also um spell and traps if you want to play traps to your deck but again this is an ftk deck you don't really play traps in those um then getting on we're going to be going into our uh morphtronic scopin now as of late uh, or as of you guys have seen with these first three cards i haven't talked about any of their defense effects they uh all of the morphtronics have an attack position and a defense position effect um but scopin is the first one that actually has a relevant defense effect because while it's in attack position you can um special summon any level four morphtronic from your hand but while it's in defense position it's treated as a level four which is very relevant because if you use Selfon to special summon Scopin out of the deck, you can put it in defense position as a level 4 and then just special summon out a level 5 synchro from there. So that's just a really nice play that you can do. This card is just super versatile um, and I, I was even toying around with playing that at 3 copies in the deck. But it just never ended up happening. There just wasn't enough space in the deck. Uh, Morphtronic Vidion. This will make a little bit more sense when we get into the extra deck. This used to be uh, two copies of uh, Slingin back in the day. Because Slingin actually has just like a positive effect. You're not playing Vidion for his effect at all. But we are playing him because he can get under uh, for the uh, for the summoning condition of Salamangre Almirage. So it's very important that he's got a 1,000 attack or less. And that he's a uh, machine Morphtronic level 4. 
Then getting on, uh, we have our two copies of Morphtronic Scannon. Uh, Scannon is a little bit of an awkward card because he's already a level 6, so we're not usually trying to go into like level 7s too often, but he is just an extra body. He can special summon himself from the hand by banishing another Morphtronic, and then he's also a starter. If you don't end up seeing Selfon or a way to get into Selfon, you can always use Scannon's effect to add Morphtronic Converter. When he's in attack position, you add Converter, um, that's going to end up putting a card to the top of your deck, and then you use the Morphtronic Converter. Converter is going to um, basically tribute him to Special Summon Selfon, and then, uh, or actually Special Summon Selfon from the deck, and then put Scannon or whatever other uh, machine monster you targeted on the field, put it back to the top of the deck, and then you can just use Selfon's effect to Special Summon that card back to the field. So, um... If you open up with Scannon and one other monster and you don't have any other way to get into Selfon, he's just another way. So um, that's just why I like to play that. And then, again, this is just another card that makes a little more sense when we look at the extra deck. We have our one copy of Crown by the World Chalice because Ib, the World Chalice Justice Shear, is uh, uh, limited to one, I believe, now. Uh, so it's really, really cool. Um, so very, very excited to be able to play this at uh, one copy in here. Uh, just, just being, a, you know, this card isn't limited, but just playing it at one copy, it's an extender. And you guys will kind of see how that works a little bit later. Um, then getting on into the spells, we have our three copies of Morphtronic Repair Unit. This card is just a uh, pitch from the hand Morphtronic monster to be able to Monster Reborn anything from Graveyard. So really great way just to like pitch anything that's just um, sort of like breaking up into your hand. Pitch it to the Graveyard and then bring back a Cellphone or a Telephone back from Grave or whatever level of something that you need. We have a uh, Morphtronic Converter. Like I said, generally I try to save Converter to be searched off of Scannon. Really great play there. And then getting on into our non-Morphtronic cards, uh, just our extenders. Three copies of Machine Duplication. You never want to play any less than three of this card because you have um, great ways to abuse this with Cellphone and Telephone. And we're actually playing a card in the side deck that works with Machine Duplication, which we'll get to a little bit later. Then um, this card, absolutely insane. This is a card that I totally totally did not understand the power level when it came out in Battles of Legend Crystal Revenge is what it was from. Um, sort of let this card uh, this card sit into my bulk for the uh, last year or two. Um, and you know you guys know that I kind of slowed down on my uploading. But then I found out, uh, I looked up some updated Morphtronic profiles and I saw that people were playing Dice Dungeon. And this card is insane because it is a field spell. And when this card is activated, you add one copy of Dimension Dice to your hand. And then with Dimension Dice, if you control a card uh, uh, with an effect that requires a dice roll, you're able to tribute one monster to special summon a another monster from your hand or deck with the effect that also requires a die roll so something really insane that you can do with the dimension dice um, so you activate Dice Dungeon, get Dimension Dice, and let's say that you open up a really bricky hand with uh, Crowned by the World Chalice. You basically open up with this and the Field Spell. Well, now that you have the Field Spell on the field, you do have a card that requires a die roll. Um, you can just go ahead and Normal Summon Crowned by the World Chalice, activate Dimension Dice, tribute this, and then you Special Summon a Cellphon from the deck, and now your plays are online. So really, really cool. Really absolutely love this card. Uh, super duper cool so we are playing three copies of dimension dice so um the way that i like to look at this like if you open up with cellphon and then cellphon uses his effect and he's a dud or he just gets you into something you can always use dimension dice and then tribute the cellphon summon out another one or go into telephone in my opinion it's like you're basically playing nine copies of um, of your machine duplication. It, it just feels like uh, you're always able to get into those monsters. And then we are actually basically playing 10 copies because we're also playing terraforming. So you've got the terraforming, three copies of Dimension Dice, three copies of Dice Dungeon, and uh, three copies of your machine duplication. Uh, it really helps with the consistency of the deck. It is literally a quarter of the deck. We are playing a 40 card deck. Uh, then along with that, just a way to draw in extra stuff. We have one copy of Chicken Game. And like I said, we can go into level seven so we're also playing the ancient fairy dragon to be able to search uh whatever field spell we're missing you do just want to make sure with the ftk that you are ending on a dice dungeon as your field spell um because otherwise the mo the opponent that has the lowest life points does not take damage so just make sure 
when you put out chicken game, it's just to draw a quick card and then you go into a, uh, a dice dungeon at the end. So the dice dungeon is, uh, you need to make sure that you have at least one of those in your hand or in the deck yet. Um, then we're getting on into two copies of Desynchro. This might seem a little blasphemous compared to my other previous lists and a lot of other people who play like Morphtronic Synchro versions, but Desynchro, uh, in this version, it is like you, like you can just draw so consistently into every piece that you need. Um, the Desynchro is really in here just as a tool when you get a little bit deeper into the deck and you have um, TG Hyper Librarian already established and then you go into a Formula Synchron, then you Desynchro and then you basically just get to keep drawing. Desynchro eventually becomes just a pot of greed in that sense. Um, and it can even be more powerful, like if you're summoning a cell phone and a smartphone, and then you get to add extra cards to your field and or hand. Um, Desynchro is extremely powerful, but you do not want to draw um, uh, the card very early on, especially like in your opening hand. So, um, so Desynchro definitely okay at two. I wanted to play it at three, but there's just not enough space. And you are able to thin your deck so hardcore with like this engine alone. You go terraforming. Search for Dice Dungeon, Dice Dungeon, search for Dimension Dice, Dimension Dice, Special Summon Cell Phone from the deck, Cell Phone Specials a guy from the deck. Right there, you just thinned your deck by like uh, four to five cards. So um, you're going to find your desynchros fairly quickly, especially since you are still playing two of them. Then we have our one copy of One for One. Again, this is just another free cell phone. Like, uh, this whole deck is just about uh, drawing free cards or getting free bodies. So uh, that's sort of just the theme. Again, with drawing cards, we have our one copy of Pot of Avarice. This is a very important card, actually, because we have um, we are playing two copies of Saryuja Skull Dread in the extra deck. But since you are playing Pot of Avarice, that means that you basically can uh, play up to three or even four activations of Saryuja because he's not a hard once per turn. So being able to like go into your first Saryuja, then you link it away to go into your second Saryuja, and then you Pot of Avarice, put the first Saryuja back, and then you use that second Saryuja and some link materials to go into the third one. And you just keep trying to search for that... Um, uh, for your, oh my gosh, your, <laughs> your cannon soldier, I always forget his name for some reason, uh, cannon soldier, um, just being able to dig in for those cards that you really need is really amazing. One copy of World Legacy Succession. I used to uh, play very highly with all of the Reborn spells, like with the uh, Morphtronic Repair Unit, Monster Reborn, uh, the Junk Box for all additional Morphtronic support. But now I'm really just playing the one World Legacy Succession because this card is searchable by your Ib in your extra deck, which is just amazing. One copy of Foolish Burial. Uh, Foolish Burial can be used either to uh, send Cannon Soldier to Grave and then bring him back with World Legacy Succession. Or you can always use um, uh, Foolish Burial just to load up a guy into the graveyard. That way your Telephone is live. If you open a Telephone and then Foolish Burial another Telephone, or you Foolish a Cell Phone, or you could also, if you open up Smartphone, just Foolish any guy like a Vidion, like you don't need too many copies of the Vidion. Foolish him to the graveyard and then use him as a body to banish a monster, special summon smart fawn, and then get your plays going that way. So Foolish Burial, uh, I kept trying to want to cut it because I was trying to just play as many Morphtronic names as I could and as many like draw cards and stuff, but really Foolish Burial is either going to get you your cannon soldier into the graveyard, that way you're not going to keep like um, uh, finding it when you're revealing off of your like cell phone and smartphone, like you're just going to see it less when it comes to those plays. And then you're going to be able to pull them out of the graveyard when you want them. Or again, just to load up the graveyard for whatever effects are relevant. Uh, then moving on, we have one copy of called by the grave and one copy of instant fusion. That way we can go into a millenniumized restrict. Um, the, uh, like the, the top three cards that really hurt this deck, one is Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom on your, um, your machine duplication does hurt, but that's probably like the least of your worries. Um, otherwise Droll and Lockbird really hurts the deck, uh, as well as Dimension Shifter. So basically if your opponent hits you with D Shifter, you cannot, uh, possibly play through that kind of stuff. 
If you do get hit by, um, uh, let's say you get hit by Droll, you can still play that through that, but D Shifter we really can't play through, so that's why you do need the one copy of Called by the Grave. Uh, but there's not really enough space to play anything else, uh, such as like a um, Crossout Designator and stuff like that. Uh, you could play Triple Tactics Talent like in the side deck, but besides that, there's just not really space for other stuff. But anyways, getting on into the extra deck, we have three, uh, two copies of Formula Synchron. This card is just absolutely insane for the deck, just letting you deep draw into the stuff um, as well as just like there's just going to be so many times where you have a level one tuner and a level one non-tuner aka yourself on uh, on the field and then you can just put them into another monster to be able to draw you a card one copy of metal Mar uh, Me martial metal marcher this card is also insane because you just pair this with another cell phone, and then that's going to allow you to draw another card if you have TG Hyper Librarian on the field, and also be able to bring you back any tuner from your graveyard, depending on like what other levels you need, or if you just need another body so that you can go into a Saryuja. Um, then, again, we are playing the TG Hyper Librarian, just for very deep draw reasons. One copy of Ib, the World Chalice Justice here, like I've said before, this card is insane, because if you have TG Hyper Librarian, which, uh, spoiler alert, you're going to get this basically every duel you get out tg hyper librarian special out ib ib is going to search you right away for your world legacy succession you're then going to draw off of tg hyper librarian's mandatory effect and then once you link away your ib the world chalice then that's when you special summon your um your uh crowned by the world chalice really awesome I also had a really, really cool play where um, earlier today I was just doing some more testing. Basically, I had out Ib and I had a self on. I took those to go into Stardust Charge Warrior, which is basically a level 6 version of Formula Synchron. He does have a hard ones per turn on his draw effect, so you got to keep that in mind. But basically, I took Ib and a self on, put them in to go into a Charge Warrior, and then when this left the field, I got my Crown by the World Chalice onto the field. I got to uh, draw two extra cards because because of the Stardust Charge Warrior and TG Hyper Librarian, I drew into a desynchro, so I desynchroed the Charge Warrior, went back into an Ib, and then I took these two to be able to go into Ancient Fairy Dragon. So it was just really cool how with um, desynchro and all these other cards, and the fact that like this, uh, you use this to go into a one uh, with that, and then it gets you into a two, so then you can eventually climb into Ancient Fairy Dragon. It was just a really cool play. There's a lot of really cool level manipulation and different and stuff like that that you can do but that is going to do it for our synchros in the deck we then have our one fusion which is going to be the Millennium Eyes Restrict, which you can bring off of your um, your Instant Fusion. The really cool thing about this is whether you draw it right away and it insulates you from um, hand traps is one cool thing, but also eventually you're just going to draw that Instant Fusion basically um, nine times out of ten, and it's just going to become like a late version extender to be able to get you into like your third copy of Saryuja essentially, which is really cool. So eventually this guy just becomes an extender, whether it's at the beginning or at the end of your combo um then we have one copy of barricade board blocker he's here one for his discard effect and two um just to be able to uh for his different link zones then we have one copy of cross sheep cross sheep is um one card i was i was thinking of cutting one of these two to be able to play another copy of relinquished anima which where is my relinquished anima i did these in the wrong order um we are also playing relinquished anima and one copy of salamangre all mirage which I've mentioned before, I really wish we could play Link Karibo, but um, the Cross Sheep does have some random interaction. Uh, the fact that it, uh, when a fusion monster is uh, in a zone that it's pointing to, you can special summon a level 4 or lower monster from your graveyard, uh, is a really interesting last-ditch effort. If you end up foolish burialing your cannon soldier, you can special summon Millenniumize Restrict to the zone that Cross Sheep points to, and then you can use Cross Sheep to special summon your cannon soldier back from the graveyard, which is I mean, really, really interesting. Um, and then also it just has other effects like uh, when it's pointing to synchros, all monsters that you control gain 700 attack. So if your FTK ends up not working, but you just need to beat over your opponent's monsters somehow, um, Cross Sheep can possibly get you like just enough attack to be able to like OTK your opponent like through battle. So that's just really interesting. There's just a lot of interesting little things that come up with Cross Sheep. 
one copy of Opelousa, Bowl of the Goddess. I've been really, really waiting for the new ban list to come out so that um, I just didn't have to do Opelousa in case it gets banned, but we're just going to put it into the profile anyways. If it ends up getting banned, this is where you can put in another Relinquished Anima or something, and then your plays just aren't going to be getting insulated um, away from hand traps. So uh, just whatever, just, you know, this can be an, uh, another copy of Relinquished Anima if it ends up getting banned. Uh, and then two copies of Saryuja Skull Dread. I tried playing it at one, and I absolutely hated it. Um, and when you play it at two, it just makes it, like I said, when you draw that Pot of Avarice, this means that you can have one Saryuja on the field already, and then you take the second Saryuja, or the first Saryuja that you already used, put it back into the extra deck, and then that basically makes you feel like you have three already. So that's going to do it for the extra deck. Side deck is actually really interesting because you just um, basically blind into going into a going second Morphtronic deck. So instead of doing the FTK, you just basically go with the theme of suck up all of your opponent's monsters. So for all of our suck up effects, we have Underworld Goddess, Moon of the Closed Heaven, and then a second copy of Relinquished Anima, which is really, really cool. And then um, getting into some of the main deck cards, I'm playing three copies of Morphtronic Vacuumin. Again, just being able to the suck up like like literally like like that's what he is there as a as a like that's what he represents there um you know and then we have machine duplication so this adds a third machine duplication target um being able to just go into morphtronic vacuum in is just absolutely insane and then basically i just side out stuff like the crown from the world chalice and all that kind of stuff stuff that you just don't really need and also obviously your cannon soldier uh can get taken out then uh, in my main deck, this last week at Locals, I actually took this and did fairly well with the deck. And I uh, the other main deck card that I put in was just Forbidden Droplet, just to be able to um, sort of crack through the opponent's board. One copy of Coral Dragon. It's another uh, level six synchro that draws you a card, and it has a card where you or has an effect where you can discard a card and then target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. So again, just a little bit of destruction. One copy of Boral Sword Dragon and one copy of. Um, access code talker just depending on what version um, uh, of like beating your opponent to death you want to go for and then also the nightmare brigade so those are the side deck options that i was playing this last week at locals like i said i did fairly well um then getting on into the cards, like I said, cards that just um, did not make it into the deck. I used to play Power Tool Dragon and sort of like play by it religiously, but I ended up taking out the um, the equip spell engine that I used to play. So I used to play for extra equips was Different Dimension Reincarnation and Wonder Wand. Wonder Wand was just a great way to draw extra cards because you do have your Relinquished Anima and also being able to play the Crown by the World Chalice and the Ib. Um, just added ex actually extra spell casters that I could pop with Wonder Wand, but it just wasn't really worth my resource to be able to like pop a guy on the field and then draw two. Uh, the deck is just way too consistent, like you don't really need that anymore. And then different dimension reincarnation. You're not banishing anything that you really, really need anymore. So um, it's not like you're going to banish your cannon soldier on accident or anything like that. So you just don't really need the uh, different dimension reincarnation. So a lot of these are just changes from what my previous lists have been. And then also I did cut the Firewall Dragon and Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice possibly getting banned on the upcoming list. But also it just seemed like um, my deck shouldn't be super focused on trying to do dumb stuff into the graveyard. The main focus is actually just drawing. You want to just keep drawing as much with TG Hyper Librarian and Saryuja and then just finding those cards that you need. And Firewall Dragon, it just kept felt uh, just felt like I kept wasting my relinquished animas, cross sheeps and stuff, trying to link up into Firewall Dragon just to like add more resources back. So it just felt like again you can just keep deep drawing with Saryuja and it just ends up working. Uh, another thing was that I just, uh, I also did play around with playing extra copies of Scopin and Vidion. If anything, I think I would want to play a third copy of Vidion, but um, it just didn't work out. I tried a, a couple of test hands where I took out the... Um, where I took out the um, desynchros and I put in, so took out the two desynchros and I put these two cards in uh, just so I had three copies of each. And it felt really cool 
Uh, I never I never whiffed on a cell phone effect very often, but it felt really bad not having those desynchros in the deck. Um, these car or, or the Vidions I would used I put the Vidions into the deck to replace the Slingins, so that was just why I have these here to represent those. And then you guys also know, like I said in the deck profile, that I was uh, playing really heavily with the Monster Reborn kind of spells, but they just by the wayside ended up coming out as well as the third desynchro. And then also all of the generic draw spell cards that I was playing, Into the Void, Pinpoint Landing, and three copies of Upstart Goblin. These cards are insane in the deck, but again, all of your consistency tools are there already. Um, you have so many ways to get into Selfon, and you need to have names and stuff in the deck for Selfon to be able to uh, dig through the deck. So I don't really think that you need to be playing all of these consistency tools. Okay, so for the final portion of this video, I wanted to sort of go over what are the combo starters of the deck and what are the rest of the cards that, again, you just kind of want to see a little bit later into the duel. And I went over a lot of these, um, but essentially here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and then, uh, you know, also nine, ten cards. So we have a quarter of the deck here, which is the only cards that you generally, um, you, you do want to see... Uh, these two cards in your opening here, these are just cards that don't exactly um, help you out as like starters, but also instant fusion, again, like I said in the profile, can be kind of looked at as an extender. Eventually, you will use his body. Once you go into Opelousa, that's when you're free to like link in away your um, Millennium Eyes Restrict. But essentially, these cards don't get you into too much. Chicken Game is kind of negligible because it's going to just draw you into a new card, but you have your World Legacy Succession which you don't want to see until later. Um, uh, you're going to be searching for this card. And then your other searched, uh, searchable cards is your Morphtronic Repair Unit and whatnot. And these don't really do you any good um, until your graveyard is more set up. You have your Pot of Avarice, which uh, again, uh, Pot of Avarice and Desynchro, you just don't want to see those until later. So um, essentially, like I was trying to say, um, there are a lot of like two card combos in this deck. Um, these are the cards that don't really go along with any of those but they are only a quarter of the deck. So uh, now I want to talk about the cards that actually are those starters. So um, uh, a few of the weird ones that I want to talk about here, you might be kind of wondering like, well, what do these do for you in your opening hand? Well, the interesting thing, which I kind of alluded to in the deck profile, is that your um, three copies of Dice Dungeon, as well as your Terraforming, along with any monster, are going to get you into a Cellphon or a Telephon, whatever's best for the situation. Generally, it's going to be a um, uh, cell phone if you kind of bricked but the amazing thing is if you open like dice dungeon any generic monster and then like machine duplication it looks like maybe a bunk hand like it doesn't really look that good but trust me it's going to be really really good still um and then you have your three copies of your dimension dice which is eventually going to be the card that actually uh does the work for you so i'm just going to kind of put these off to the side here and we're going to kind of just sort of see like um like a, a diagram of how this all sort of works together so um we have sort of these cards working in tandem together uh along with the dimension dice dimension dice also just helping if you draw any of the um, morphtronic telephon and your cell phones and then also i sort of alluded to like this being like an extra copy of your machine duplication so we might as well just toss those out here um, also just anything along with any generic monster you have one for one which is just another really amazing card just pitch any monster from your hand special summon out uh, one of these guys from the deck which is really really cool um, then you have foolish burial foolish burial um, sort of works in tandem with a lot of stuff but the best way that it works is that Foolish Burial is a starter to be able to help you uh, to set up your smartphone or again, pitch your Cannon Soldier to the graveyard just so that you have Cannon Soldier in grave. He's out of the deck. You're not going to be excavating him like five, six times when you're using cell phone and smartphone's effects. Um, and then another thing that just works well, as long as you have specifically a Morphtronic monster, is you have your Morphtronic Scannon. So I'm just going to kind of put this in the middle along with all of the other ones. So Scannon plus any other monster is going to then get you to that Morphtronic Converter, and Converter plus any other monster is 
is also going to get you into self on. Uh, and then the last sort of like little combo that we have here is that we have um, Morphtronic Sculpin plus Vidion technically gets you into a um, a Synchro 7 play into your Ancient Fairy Dragon or just any of these uh, monsters plus your uh, one for one, your terraforming is also, um, or your Morphtronic Converter is also going to get you like into a cell phone. So um, I thought it was just really interesting to sort of lay all of these cards out like this. Um, you can just sort of see how like these 30 cards just turn into all of your gas so um it just sometimes they don't look like it and sometimes the cards pair wrong like if you open up with um uh, morphtronic vidion plus machine duplication um plus instant fusion and called by the grave and desynchro like you're gonna have hands like this and you can't really do anything about it but still there are like eventually gonna be hands that are just amazing where you're gonna be opening up cell phone plus machine duplication plus called by the grave so you know you're safe plus desynchro because you uh and then that helps you to know that you're gonna just be comboing off and maybe you're even gonna be opening up cannon soldier and you guys are gonna see when i do the combo videos that anytime i open up cannon soldier we're just going to put that hand back because um generally opening cannon soldier is just going to be uh, like the otk there but anyways guys thank you so much for watching this in-depth deck profile um this gets a little bit crazy when i do them like this but i really wanted to sort of go over all of my methodology my methodology for which cards i kept in which cards I kept out, um, and the ratios of why I was playing them. And then just also to show you this last section on sort of like, um, uh, sort of how these cards all work together and what they mean together when you open them. Like, uh, just even like the subtlety of why Salman Gray All Mirage is in the extra deck. Like there are just so many different reasons for all of that stuff. So anyways, guys, thank you guys again so much for watching. Uh, if you guys have any other cards that work amazing in Morphtronic FTK or any other Morphtronic deck, leave me a comment in the comment section down below we are going to be doing a combo tutorial on this eventually so uh, that'll be really cool when that comes out uh, hopefully the ban list won't mess us up too much but thank you guys again so much for watching subscribe to the video if you guys uh, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already and we will see you guys for the next one peace